Let's start our topic with the title, Why Should Christ's Father Be Called Our God and Christ Our Lord as Christians? Come and let us read some. 1 Corinthians 8, 5-7-5 For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many, and lords many. 6 But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. 7 Howbeit there is not in every man that knowledge, for some with conscience of the idol unto this hour eat it as a thing offered unto an idol, and their conscience being weak is defied. Philippians 2 11, 11 And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. 1 Corinthians 4 6 6 And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that none of you be puffed up for one against another. Is it really important to follow or obey the gospel? Here is the answer, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-2 Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. 2 By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. It is clear now that we should follow the gospel to be sure of our salvation, 2 Thessalonians 1, 8. In flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, it is clear here that those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ will be retaliated against. Although we can read that Christ is God but if we talk about with God the Father, Lord Jesus Christ must still our Lord, here are some, John 1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1, 14, and the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Titus 2 13, 13 Looking for that blessed hope, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. That's where the topic is about Christ and his appearance. As well as, John 20 28, 28 And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. That's just about Christ again. It is not bad to call Christ our God if it is only about him and not about God the Father. Therefore we conclude that even if it is read that Christ is God but if we talk about with the Father we should acknowledge that he is the only true God and call Lord Jesus Christ our Lord for the glory of God the Father and we will continue to obey the gospel so that our salvation remains. Among the Catholics they mention the term God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost is a big mistake because God the Father is not glorified and have not obeyed the gospel because it is no longer biblical. In some assembly of Pentecostal they believe that Jesus as the Father also is a great deception because of being unbiblical and not totally obeying the gospel of the Lord also. They have doctrine not according to the gospel. I hope you understand what I mean or explain here. 10 Things We Must Understand 1. Being a member of a church is not the same as being a Christian. Christians should go to church which is the house of God that is why not all who go to churches are Christians. 2. Entering a man's house doesn't necessarily make you a family member. In the same way, entering church house every day doesn't necessarily make you a member of God's family. You need to be born again and be added in the house of God. 3. Calling Jesus Lord doesn't necessarily mean he is your Lord. The evidence that Jesus is your Lord is your obedience to his word. Why do you call me, Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Luke 6 46. 4. The fact that you believe in the existence of God doesn't necessarily mean you are saved. Even the demons believe this, and they tremble in terror, 
James 2.19 We should call the Father our God and Jesus our Lord for the glory of God the Father as we remain in the gospel that has been preached to us. 5. You can choose how you want to live before death but you can't choose the consequence of how you lived after death. Come back to your senses as you ought, and stop sinning. 1 Corinthians 15.34 6. No one encounters Christ and remains the same. If nothing has changed since you met Christ then it wasn't Christ that you met. Don't be deceived. We should fully obey the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-2 7. Works cannot save anyone but anyone who is saved cannot hide his works. The evidence of your salvation is seen in the life you live out. Just as the body is dead without spirit, so also faith is dead without good works. James 2.26 8. The world is changing but God hasn't changed his word to fit our changing world. Don't change the word of God to suit your actions, change your actions to suit the word of God. 9. Hebrews 9.27 says, Man is destined to die once, and after that to face judgment. If it's true that people die then it's also true that there is judgment after death. Don't live as if there is no judgment. 10. The more you celebrate your birthday the closer you get to your death day. You may know how much years you've spent but the time left is a mystery. Live every day as if it's your last day. Blessed are those who have been saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Until here only.